We are fortunate now that Dr. Dharmendra Modha is able to join us. Uh, Dharmendra is a pioneer in cognitive computing and has accumulated numerous distinctions that you will see on the screen, uh, including uh, receiving the IIT Bombay Distinguished Alumnus Award. He's a fellow of the IEEE and is uh, an IBM fellow. Uh, Dharmendra will now share his experiences working as a doctoral student with Professor Masri. Dharmendra. Good afternoon. Today, with profound gratitude and with memories of Professor Elias Masri, I present subsequent talks. Thank you, Professor Bhaskar Rao and Professor Larry Milstein and UCSD for organizing this symposium. My gratitude to Professor Elias Masri is evident from the thesis dedication. Professor Masri provided his encouragement, his support, his insight, and most important of all, his inexhaustible patience. That's what it takes to convert an engineer into a mathematician. Professor Masri also provided me with unlimited freedom to pursue an entirely new area that was not his current field of research. As I prepared to work for Professor Elias Masri, my first paper was with Professor Shia Feynman. It related to a learning law for density estimation where we derived an un supervised backpropagation algorithm for neural networks. In parallel, flexing mathematical muscle with Robert Heck Nielsen, we showed that neural networks are universal approximators even in abstract mathematical spaces of functionals. Professor Masri was a mathematician in an engineering department. Here are his mathematical ancestors. And they are very illustrious. Huygens, Leibniz, Bernoulli brothers, Mobius, Euler, Lagrange, Laplace, Poison, Fourier, Dirichlet, Ohm, Lipsitz, Gauss, and Felix Klein. Truly, mathematical blood flowed in his intellectual vein. So it was not easy to work with Professor Masri. It required a level of preparation and a level of commitment that is beyond ordinary. My path to working with Professor Masri was paved by recommendations from Professor Ramesh Rao, thank you, and Professor Kenneth Woods Delgado, thank you, for suggesting that I study real analysis and probability theory in the math department. Also, I was supported by Professor Shia Feynman to pursue my dreams. And of course, I would not have been ready without courses from Professor Gatul. Professor Kenneth Quid Delgado, Professor Robert Heck Nielsen, Professor Michael Sharp, Jeffrey Rabin, Albert White, Jack Wolf, and of course Elias Masri. And so on. My thesis consisted of two papers published in IEEE Transaction on Information Theory. A key result in my thesis was Bernstein inequality for IID random variables. So given 
n id random variables which are bounded and have zero mean bernstein equality says that the probability that the normalized sum exceeds a constant is upper bounded by an exponential decaying square of the constant and the number of samples n this is a very powerful inequality now first professor masri had me go through classical proof of the bernstein inequality in excruciating detail every step had to be proven every step had to be justified and every step had to be understood we then undertook extending the inequality to strongly mixing processes these are the processes for which their dependence slowly decays with increasing distance so alpha j where j is the distance between two random variables decays as e to the minus j to the power beta where beta is known as the mixing coefficient if beta is infinity one recovers the iid case the key result was in this case the number of samples n can be replaced roughly by n alpha which is roughly equal to n to the power beta over beta plus 1 so if beta is infinity beta over beta plus 1 is 1 and one recovers the iid case and as beta becomes larger and larger in other words the process becomes more and more dependent n alpha becomes smaller and smaller and our result was that the bernstein inequality holds with n replaced by n alpha so that's the key result now once again such a result required tremendous amount of perseverance it is actually the only contribution that i have made to mathematics all of my other work except one example has been engineering this gives you a brief look of mathematics in wall to prove such an inequality it is a sequence of equalities inequalities interspersed along with precise mathematical explanation of how such a transformation takes place this required months of meticulous working and creatively thinking in interchanging with professor elias mazri we typically spent on an average at least 8 weeks doing mathematics in his office where he would be absolutely tireless and patient and what he was looking for was precision mathematics rigor and clarity equipped with the bernstein inequality we undertook the problem of universal prediction of stationary random processes suppose one is trying to predict a sample q plus 1 given past q samples from an alpha mixing process in this case the regression function mq is unknown but is estimated with neural networks with the knowledge of memory q and n samples and we show that such a regression function converges to mq at a rate which is logarithm of n divided by n to the power beta over beta plus 1 which is the same exponent from the bernstein inequality the surprising factor is that this exponent is not divided by memory q in other words assuming that the regression function satisfies certain smoothness constraint this estimator bypasses the curse of dimensionality now 
to top this result, now to top this result, we established one more result where memory Q is unknown. In this case, we're still estimating the same regression function MQ. However, Q is not known, so must be estimated. So the regression function here estimates Q itself. And even in this case, this estimator approaches the unknown regression function at the exact same rate as if memory was known and therefore universal prediction. This was a very powerful result and both of these papers appeared in IEEE transaction on information theory. After my thesis, I continued working with Professor Elias Mazui on frequential and cross validated regression estimation and rate of convergence in density estimation using neural networks. So the idea behind frequential estimation is that suppose one had a large set of models that one has to select from. One trains each model on n samples and predicts n plus one sample. And the prediction error is accumulated. And one iterates through n, n going from one all the way to available samples. And the accumulated prediction error, which is completely data driven, is used as a model selection score. And it's completely parameter free. And with this selection criteria, we established the rate of convergence using neural networks as well as several polynomials. Going further, given n IID samples from a d-dimensional probability distribution function, we established the rate of convergence using neural networks for density estimation that once again bypass curse of dimensionality, assuming certain smoothness on the density. This work is intimately related to my first paper with Professor Shia Feynman. Now, all this work with Professor Elias Masri required tremendous attention to mathematical details and rigor. And this simply would not have been possible without Professor Masri providing one-on-one -on -one instruction in the classical style of mathematical education, one teacher, one student, over long term and with patience. Now let me tell you some stories of Professor Elias Masri. As an early graduate student, I was eager to please my advisor, but Professor Masri always maintained his composure and I noticed he never smiled. About six to nine months into our, our relationship, one day I precisely stated an inequality and proved it, then he smiled. That taught me that Professor Masri stood for rigor, clarity, precision, and very careful thinking. He was also very funny in his lectures. So in signal processing, we have Hemming window, Henning window, and so forth. By iterating, one can go to higher order windows. And so one day, he named one of the higher end order windows as N Chen windows, causing the whole class to crack up in laughter. He absolutely loved to mark up manuscripts in dripping red ink. When I wrote up my last paper, I had by then imbibed his style and there was nothing to mark up. And then he commented, now you're ready to graduate. Now, as we we're proving our second theorem on universal prediction, this theorems involve careful balancing between bias and variance, approximation error and estimation error. But no matter how hard we tried, 
we could not get the approximation error in the unknown memory case to zero. But on the flight, somehow we discovered the secret. And we were so excited and apparently we were so loud that two attendants rushed to us to ask us to keep quiet. That's the most excited that I've ever seen Professor Masri. Now here's a quiz for you. Did Professor Masri like cheese or chocolate? Well, he absolutely hated chocolate and he had cheese every day for lunch. Now Bernstein inequality, which was the flagship result in my thesis, was challenged by a very, very famous reviewer, a contender for a Nobel Prize in economics. He claimed that his student, who was then a professor at MIT, had proved it first. Now, Professor Masri very calmly guided me in ribbiting this claim. We carefully showed that their proof was in fact incorrect and inapplicable in cannot be corrected and did not have the tightness of the bounds. So this became extremely contentious as it pitted, pitted us against one of the most formidable forces in econometrics and statistics. However, Professor Masri's approach was so forceful that it caused the associate editor, Professor Andrew Barron from Yale, to actually study the contended paper in detail, and he 100% agreed with our claim. So Professor Masri taught me never to back down in a scientific argument when you are right. And in fact, never enter a scientific argument unless you are right. And this is a skill that I use every day. In fact, I was forced to use to defend my project just last weekend. Given the education that I received from Professor Masri, I often joke that I went to not just UCSD, but also to MIT, Masri Institute of Technology. Now, as I graduated and finished my postdoc, I accidentally discovered that for the last summer, he forgo his summer salary to pay mine, so he was a generous soul. Now, turning attention to other positive influences, I would like to acknowledge positive influence of Professor Robert Heck Nielsen, who was also a guiding force in my life. Both Professor Masri and Professor Heck Nielsen provided me tremendous career help as I graduated from UCSD in choosing career on one side between academia and other side between extreme practice. As a result, I was to walk the thin path where I continued in industry but kept a very firm research career alive. Even after I had passed through my initial career stages, both of them stayed in touch and continued to guide me in their own unique and differing ways. My early IBM career involved working on codes for disk drive that shipped into every IBM disk drive at that time, into developing new text and data analysis algorithms that span into tens of thousands of dimensions. And this taught me that this data is so complex that no simple mathematical distributions can approximate it. And at that time, I began to realize the distinction between truth and probability. While probability is infallible, truth is vaster, and one can explore the truth on the basis of firm mathematical foundation. Finally, in early part of my career, I invented a new cache replacement algorithm. Caching is perhaps the first and the foremost problem in computer science. And the most famous algorithm is LRU. To upstage such a long-standing algorithm in a demonstrable way was extremely difficult. And again, 
true understanding of Marco decision processes while keeping the simplicity of impl implementation in mind is what proved invaluable. Now, on the strength of this result, in 2006, I launched Brain-Inspired Computing. I brought together who's who in neuroscience, computer science, information theory, robotics, Nobel laureates, National Medal of Technology winners, Turing Award winners, Shannon Award winners. And right then, being the guiding stars, I had Professor Ramesh Rao and Professor Robert A. Nielsen also present at this signature event. Subsequently, that led to my life's work in brain-inspired computing since 2006 to still going on. This work involved first mapping neuroscientific data anatomically and physiologically. Second, it involved large-scale simulations on the largest supercomputers that IBM made, eventually achieving 100 trillion synapses and winning the ACM Golden Bell Prize. And the third part was creating brain-inspired non von Neumann architecture, an embodiment of which was true node. One million neurons, power of a hearing aid battery, size of a post-it stamp, like a little supercomputer. We then created systems with true node, reaching 64 and 80 million neurons. TrueNote was widely recognized, making cover of science twice, being in the Computer History Museum, winning the Misha Mahoval Prize, and being recognized by, professor, by President, not Professor, but President Obama. Since 2018, I've been continuing this in stealth mode for new results to be announced, perhaps Along the way, I was able to map long distance wiring diagram in the macaque monkey brain. So this was one science result in my career. As I was working on brain inspired computing, I visited the campus in 2009 and was highly encouraged by Professor Masri, Robert Ick Nielsen, in Kenneth Cruz Delgado, and I continued to stay in touch. At that time, the campus magazine wrote that I owe a great debt to UCSD and many wonderful professors from the Jacob School, especially Professor Masri and Robert Heck Nielsen, for their priceless gift of education. I say, fundamental training persists. Professors change lives when they teach thinking. They teach students how to approach any problem, how to rigorously break down any problem and deal with it. So no matter where I have been and what I have done, I have carried with me seeds from Professor Masri, Professor Robert Nielsen, and all the professors at UC San Diego. I was invited by Dean Pisano to give the commencement speech at the 2007 School of Engineering Ring Ceremony. Somehow or other, many threads of my life and career seem to be intertwined with UC San Diego. Professor Todd Hilton was the visionary behind DARPA Synapse program, which led to True North. And he's now affiliated with UC San Diego. Along the way, I picked up mentoring from Larry Smart, and I learned how he created KLIT Square as a mix of academic disciplines. And Larry's touch, which magnifies and multiplies everything and anything, it's like good magic. He taught me how to make two plus two become much more than four, in fact, 22. 
although I spent enormous amount of time with Professor Kenneth Cruz Delgado, I only ended up writing a paper with him after TrueNote was published, made, and distributed to many universities, first and foremost being UCSD, and then we wrote this very beautiful paper in 2016. Now my connection with UCSD is continuing. My son is a sophomore at computer science department. And when one of you teaches the following course, I'll be the first one to audit it. A year long sequence providing a historic, integrative, principle based, hands on perspective on math, science, technology, and engineering. Now let me leave you with a fun anecdote of Professor Elias Mazui. At my wedding, August 7, 1993, Professor Mazui was in the audience along with Professor Ramesh Rao and he was taking wagers on whether or not I will kiss the bride. For those of you who know the Indian culture, I will let you guess the answer. But he was quite a comic in his own I would like to end these thoughts with a profound sense of gratitude for Professor Elias Masri for everything that he taught me in terms of strength, mathematical rigor, clarity, precision, correctness, and never backing down when one is right, as well as humor. I would also like to thank all the professors at UC San Diego, Professor Robert E. Nielsen, Professor Ramesh Rao, Professor Kenneth Cruz Delgado, Professor Shaya Feynman, Mathematics Professor Gatour, Professor Sharp, Professor Jeffrey Raven, uh, late Professor Halbert White, late Professor Jack Wolf, and also Professor Bhaskar Rao for opening signal processing wherein I could pursue a major as the very first student and replace all EE courses with math courses. So thank you, I'm grateful, and may Professor Mazavi rest in peace. Thank you, Dharmendra. Wonderful words. Uh, I can see the influence that Elias clearly had on you. I felt at times like I was listening to him. Uh, we want to be open and uh, entertain any questions, comments from anyone in the audience. Uh, uh, we hope you'll be around, of course, uh, there'll be time. Uh, moving on, I wanted to share with you uh, some other tributes that we got uh, from when the ECE department was still uh, EECS, uh, and we used to be in the APNM building. Uh, uh, Professor Michael Fredman uh, notes that uh, he and Elias overlapped as faculty during the era of APNIS, Applied Physics and Information Sciences, which is our second incarnation, uh, which then turned into the EECS department. And he notes that it was always a joy to chat with him, even when disagreeing over departmental politics. And I'm going to uh, go out on a limb and point out that perhaps Larry Milstein, who is here with us, uh, understands how, exactly how to unpack this comment. Wonderful words from Professor Michael Fredman. Uh, Professor Bill Howden, who was also one of the founders of the computer science uh, department, and at one time, of course, in EECS, uh, notes that his office was next to Elias's uh, in the old APNM building. He was a very nice person and brilliant, of course. In the space of about 20 minutes, he once explained hypothesis testing so well to me that I was able to then go and create a new lower bound for software reliability. Uh, whenever I would see him around campus, I could feel a smile coming on. Words from Bill Howden. Uh, 